The Honorable Member for Brant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm thrilled today to stand in support of Bill C-45. Many Canadians that I speak to are refreshed and excited to finally have a stable majority government that does exactly what it told voters it would do when it ran for election. We are focusing on Canadians' priorities in a time when strong, steady economic leadership is needed. Canadians elected our government to work building a stronger and more prosperous Canada. And that's what we've done. We promised to streamline bureaucratic processes and build a leaner and more effective public service. We promised to eliminate government duplication, red tape, and unnecessary paperwork. We promised to respect taxpayers' dollars and eliminate the deficit without raising taxes or cutting transfers. That's right. We promised to ensure the long-term sustainability of social programs. And we promised to aggressively implement pro-growth economic initiatives to create jobs. Mr. Speaker, in every area that I have just outlined, our government, this government, is delivering. And there is no doubt that our economic action plan is working. Over 820,000 net new jobs have been created, most of them full-time, most of them in the private sector. Our debt-to-GDP ratio remains the lowest in the G7 by far, and just yesterday it was reaffirmed that we remain on track, we remain on track for balanced budgets. The OECD and the IMF predict Canada's economic growth will be amongst the strongest in the G7 over the next two years. The World Economic Forum says our banks are the soundest in the world. Forbes magazine ranked Canada as the best place to do business in the world. And the IMF just recently singled out Canada as an economic model for the world to follow. Canadians know our plan is working, and Budget 2012 continues to build on the great progress we have made. And Mr. Speaker, perhaps most exciting is how our plan, the direction of this government, is delivering results in my riding of Brant. Now, like many communities in southwestern Ontario, the economy of Brant is evolving from large-scale, historic, heavy industrial manufacturing to value-added small and medium-sized companies. Brant has a rich history of heavy industrial manufacturing, dating back to the turn of the century, when Brantford was the third largest economy in Canada, only behind Toronto and Montreal. We revolutionized the farm out of our community by building the first tractors that were sold around the world. But recently, and due to the global economic climate and due to necessity, Brantford has been in a large transition. And I like to think of Brantford because of the great influence that post-secondary education has had on our community. I like to think that we are in our sophomore year. Manufacturing continues to evolve. As our mayor so, so rightfully states, build, we're, our goal is to build a 21st century city and county, and we're excited about our future. The large influence of post-secondary uh, growth in our community will be highlighted later in my speech. Canada is attracting the world's attention as countries look to safe havens for trade and investment and our smart economic policies are giving Brant businesses a competitive, competitive advantage to capitalize on these new opportunities. Our plan to keep taxes low, cut red tape, promote investment, and aggressively expand trade is just what manufacturers and exporters need in our riding. Now, cutting red tape and one of the elements, of, another element of our, of our 2012 budget which is the small business tax credit for hiring, is something that I'm intimately familiar with as a business person in the building industry, where I own my own company for over 23 years. I've held many economic roundtables in our community, and the one, feature, the one comment that, that, is, that keeps coming back over and over again is helping small business, 
to hire new employees, and also cutting red tape, making the administrative side of business easier. And our government is also supporting by investing in post-secondary expansion, which is attracting students, businesses, jobs, and investment to our city and our now thriving downtown core. Our government has invested $13 million for the Laurier Research Academic Center and recently announced $16.7 million for the Laurier YMCA Athletic Complex. Now, some interesting statistics here. In a 2011 analysis commissioned by the City of Brantford, the number of Brantford businesses reporting a positive impact from post-secondary institutions tripled from 47%, that was up from 15% in 2005. Over the past dozen years, institutions have invested $130 million in Brantford's downtown core. A downtown core, by the way, that desperately needed an injection of people and investment. Mr. Speaker, I'm thrilled to stand in support of Canada's Economic Action Plan because it responds to the needs and priorities of my community and it is delivering results for the people of Brant. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's what Scott Lyons said about his company, Extend Communications Plan, to bring 70 new jobs into our downtown. I quote, We are really excited about reinvesting in the downtown. It's a vibrant and growing community down here. Brantford has a great workforce, and we are excited to be expanding our workforce right in the downtown. Another quote, here's what John Dimitrieff, CEO of Patriot Forge, recently said. And I quote, although Patriot Forge operates on both sides of the border, very soon Patriot will be undertaking a 35,000 square foot addition and expansion that will increase jobs and create new jobs right here in Brantford. That we are choosing to invest and expand in Canada is due in large part to the current government's plan that keeps taxes low and creates a competitive business environment. Mr. Speaker, the Massilli Group is delivering 100 new jobs to Brantford because according to its CEO, and I quote, Brantford is an ideal location because of its proximity to the core markets in Canada and the United States its manufacturing-friendly business environment, and our ability to retain and add to our highly skilled workforce. WePro Industries is actively recruiting resumes to fill over 500 jobs it projects to create in our downtown core by 2013. John Paul De Beer of Brant Screencraft recently purchased a plant and moved 50 jobs to Brantford. He said, we looked at locating our finishing and distribution facility in Michigan, but the corporate tax cuts and programs provided by the Conservative government were the deciding factor to expand in Canada. Brantford's Mayor Chris Friel recently spoke about how small and medium-sized businesses are becoming a powerful engine of job growth in Brantford, as companies like Auto Modular, First Golf, Green Mantra Recycling, and Sunrise Warehousing Company grow and expand. He said, it's not something that gets a lot of media attention, but a lot of small to medium-sized businesses have opened in Brantford in the past year, creating a lot of jobs. I'm not sure people realize or appreciate how important this is to the city. Indeed, on another statistic, office vacancy in Brantford has been cut in half over the last two to three years. Also over the past two years, Brantford has risen 35 spots to number 64 on the CFIB Communities in Boom ranking of Canada's most entrepreneurial cities. And Kathy Oden of the Brantford Brant Chamber of Commerce describes how a growing entrepreneurial spirit is reviving our community. They're opening up small restaurants, hair salons, spas, and expanding retail locations. Typically, they're fulfilling a dream or a desire that they have nurtured for some time when she speaks about that entrepreneurial spirit that we are feeling and experiencing. Mr. Speaker, Canada's Economic Action Plan is supporting jobs and growth in my riding of Brant. The good news doesn't stop for there, 
However, I believe my time is up, so Mr. Speaker, I would encourage all members of this House to support Bill C-45 on its speedy passage through the House of Commons. Uh, question and comment, the Deputy Alfred Pellin. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Puis j'aimerais remercier mon collègue pour son discours. C'était très intéressant. Euh, J'ai vu que mon collègue a parlé des petites et des moyennes entreprises, a parlé des emplois dans son comté, à quel point que C45 pouvait, les, pouvait aider, puis à quel point le gouvernement avait aidé euh, les employeurs de petites et moyennes entreprises dans son comté. Bien, je regardais au travers du projet de loi C45, puis j'ai vu qu'une des mesures, c'était un, la mise en place d'un crédit d'impôt temporaire à l'embauche pour les petites entreprises. Euh, C'est la plus grosse mesure, en fait, qui est mentionnée pour aider euh, la création d'emplois euh, dans le projet de loi C-45. Sauf que ce projet de loi-là, euh, ce, ce crédit d'impôt-là est temporaire. C'est d'un maximum de 1 000 et c'est pour seulement l'année d'imposition 2012. Alors, autrement dit, euh, ça va déjà être fini euh, quand, avant même que le projet de loi C-45 soit adopté. Alors, euh, j'aimerais savoir ce que mon collègue en pense et qu'est-ce qu'il trouve de si intéressant pour les petites et moyennes entreprises dans ce projet de loi-là. The Honourable Member for Brant. Well, I thank the Honourable Member for her question because, again, uh, this is, this is uh, uh, my background in terms of uh, having a company that employed on average 20 to 30 uh, people at any given point in time. Let me tell you the extent that the small business tax credit goes to because it is known that half a million employers in Canada have taken advantage of the small business tax credit. And we are moving forward with that. We are extending it to businesses. This is a job creator. The other item that I mentioned in my speech that I would like to underscore is the fact that we are dealing with the red tape that small business, small business people generally have a hard time dealing with because they don't have the resources to have someone on staff or take on the additional cost of dealing with all of the things that government demands of them on the administrative side of their businesses. So let me tell you this, when you look at C45 and the action we have taken, we are moving forward to make it a lot easier for small businesses to deal with government. Uh, questions and comments, Honourable Member for Lambton, Kent, Essex. Uh, Middlesex. Middlesex. But close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank uh, my colleague uh, from Brant County. Uh, I know that his background uh, is actually in business. Uh, it's in a small or medium, small business. Uh, uh, actually, the statistics, uh, Mr. Speaker, that he's talked about in Brantford, I think, speaks exponentially about not only the policies and legislation that has been brought forward by this government, but I've got to tell you, if, if you ever follow this man back in his writing, uh, mm -hmm. you will understand the commitment that he's had in rebuilding uh, part of his county, and that being in Brantford, and I thank him for that. But uh, I'm going to follow up on the question from a colleague across the way, because sort of minimizing uh, the significance, I think, of small businesses, in which we know 90 percent or 98 percent of the businesses in this country are small businesses that hire over 50-some percent of the people. And I'm wondering, uh, Mr. Speaker, if I could ask my colleague, if he could actually expand just a little bit beyond what the extension of the tax credit for small businesses about what has actually happened over the time that is built because what we find for this government is that we build continually from one budget to the other. What he might uh, help us with in terms of small businesses. The Honourable Member for Brant. Well, I would thank uh, the Honourable Member for this, uh, this opportunity to describe a little more about what our policies have done for small business because we have continued to make a more attractive environment for people to begin small businesses. And many communities like ours rely on the creation of new businesses because it is not a perfect world where all the other companies within your riding or within your community stay in business. Some do shut down because of economic pressures and also competitive pressures and they, they move to other jurisdictions. That's a reality. This is this is, a, this, is, this is always fluid in our community. So yes, there are some companies that have moved on to other, uh, either closed down or moved on to other jurisdictions. But what is important is exactly what C45 does. It maintains the path 
that we are taking to create the platform for businesses to prosper. They are the job creators. They are the ones. Small business employees, small and medium-sized employees, 80 percent of the people in this country. And we continue to, to lay out for Canadians exactly what we said we would do, which are policies that align themselves to simplify being in business and also to prosper and create jobs.